you glad that, that you do have a confidence to know that uh, God is the one that is going to keep a hand on us to the very end of our lives. And that even the things we don't understand will be accordance with uh, His will and design for our lives. Amen. I'm glad I'm a child of God today. Uh, there's sometimes I look at those that have no faith and I just... Yeah, there's something inside me just breaks because what hope do they have beyond this life? But we have a God that, that gives us that hope beyond this life. And we know where we're going. And we know there's a God that's going to keep us. Everybody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let's stand together for the reading of the Word. And are you ready to go, Brock? You? Yeah, there's that high sign. It says he's ready to go. Uh, Psalms chapter 37. We're going to read verses 3 through 9. Maybe a little bit more of a, a Bible study than anything else, but uh, uh, we're going to probably do some preaching in the midst of it all and, uh, and just talk about our hearts today. Uh, Psalms 37, 3 through 9, and I imagine they've got it up behind me. Not as yet, and, uh, but he'll, I'm sure he'll get it up there very, very quickly. Trust in the Lord and do good. Everybody said Amen. Trust in God. Didn't just leave it there. Do good. Everybody say, I'm going to do good. I didn't. I, honestly, I didn't feel that. <laughs> There's times, you know, when you say an amen or respond that I, I just feel it, the depth of my soul that it's just, I just didn't feel that. <laughs> Everybody say, I'm going to do good. Amen, amen, amen. Now I lost my place in all of that. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Oh, God's going to take care of you if you do those two things, right? Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust. Oh, I already read that. I was almost barely repeating, didn't I? And he shall bring forth, verse 6, thy righteousness as the light and the judgment as the noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not thyself because of him who prospereth in his way. Because of the man who bringeth forth wicked devices to pass. Don't, don't fret about that kind of stuff. Cease from anger. Forsake wrath. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. Is that as far? No, I got one more to go. For evildoers shall be cut off, and the, but those that wait upon the Lord, they shall inherit the earth. Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Thank you, Lord, so very much for your word today. Thank you for the promises in this psalm, Lord. That there's. And I know that your promises are, there's certain things that are attached to them. There's conditions. There's things that we have to do. And it would be wrong, Lord, of us as, as this race to believe that we were going to receive from you things that did not require anything of us. That there's no faith, no trust that's, that's required on our part in order to receive your promises. I'm glad, Lord, that your word says that, that there needs to be that in our lives. And that if so, those promises will take effect in each one of our lives. God, help us not only to believe the promises, but also, Lord, Lord, that we would claim those promises for our lives, for each and every one of us, that we would claim those promises in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. And you may be seated in Jesus' name. I love this, this psalm and this passage of Scripture. I like the promises in it. I like the fact that God says that uh, He's going to take care of us, that we're going to be fed if we'll just do good, trust in God. Amen. It means God's going to take care of our physical needs, right? In the middle of that passage of Scripture that I read, it says also that God's going to give us the desires of our heart. I like that Scripture too, don't you? I want Cadillacs and, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, no, really, 
Really, I do. No, I don't. I, I had one when I first arrived here in Port Alberni. My wife and I were called here to come and start a church, and, and we had done fairly well financially, and, and so I drove into town. I had an 850 uh, Suzuki highway bike. I had a Cadillac Eldorado, and my wife had a vehicle as well, and, and, uh, and it wasn't much more than about three or four months later, I was driving a rusted out Toyota station wagon. And, uh, and all of the, the motorbike and the Cadillac and all that was gone. And uh, we were just happy to be in the work of God. Amen. And I was so thankful uh, throughout all the years that we've been here. God has been so faithful to take care of us. I have to go back to the Scripture and believe that, that some of it has to do with the fact that, that we gave ourselves over to what God wanted for our lives. I don't think it's by chance that God takes care of His people. I don't think it's an accident that God would bless you in the things that you would desire to do both uh, within this world, but also spiritually as well. I think God looks at it like, like I do. I took my, uh, one of my, I was going to mention Lachlan today in service, but they're traveling. He got, uh, Tim got two weeks off and they're on their way to California. So I can't imagine, well, maybe they are. Uh, watching the service today because uh, of course last Sunday she put the service up and Lachlan was trying to talk to me during service and was kind of upset that I didn't acknowledge that he was trying to talk to me and so uh, Lachlan if you're watching today this is for you hey man if you're not watching today well I just wasted that that moment but I took one of my grandsons, I took, uh, took Addie out last night. Mom and Dad had gone for a birthday party. Of course, Tim is, is aging as we speak and uh, has reached 32. And so they had a birthday party in Nanaimo for him. And so we, pardon me, John, who did I say? Oh, Tim. Oh, yeah, I still had Tim on my mind. John turned 32. And, uh, and so I took Addie out and we went shopping at Walmart and, and uh, I bought him a book. And then we stopped at McDonald's and I got a McDonald's. Hey, I know how to get on the good side of my, my grandchildren, right? Now, you know what? I think, I think God looks down at us sometimes and he desires so very much. Just like, just like a proud parent, you know, you, your kid's done good and you just want to do something special for them. Not that you should give them everything, but, but I do think that God looks at us and, and he just is pleased with us and wants to do good things in our lives. The Bible says all good things come from God. All good things come from God. The, the not so good things, they may not come from him, but the good things come from God. Everybody said amen. God's placed some good things in our lives, hasn't he? But I, I like this part in the middle, and we're going to just stop and we're going to take a look at this for just a little bit. That um, verse 4, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. I, there's a lot of things I desire. There's some things in my heart, and, and I'll joke about it and say, well, I want to have this, or I want that, or I want the other thing. But it really, in reality, what I want most of all is for God just to have His way in my life. Amen. And that's a desire in my heart, that, that I would learn how to submit myself in, e in an even greater way to God. That God would use me in a mightier way than what He has in the past. And that my relationship with Him would grow to the place where there was an intimacy that, that have you ever noticed that with, with a couple after they've been together for a long time, that after a while you can almost finish each other's sentences? Have you noticed that? You know, like I can look at my wife and, and I can sometimes tell just by her body language what she's feeling at that particular moment. And, uh, and I'm sure she can feel the same way about me. And, and uh, I would like that relationship with Jesus Christ where I can feel immediately what he's feeling. That I'll know when I get into a certain situation or circumstance or I meet somebody that, that I'll be able to feel and know what the Lord is feeling and knowing. I felt that when, when I saw Rick's email at the beginning here. And I felt like, you know what? I feel the God in that. And I felt that closeness that I needed to say something that, uh, that would be a blessing to him. And so I, I want you to know today that, that my desire is that that would be in my life all the time. But there's some other things I desire too. 
There's some things that, are, that I feel like are, are sometimes missing in my life. I, I want to see revival. I preached about revival. I've talked about it. I, uh, when we first came here to Port Alberni and uh, we struggled for the first few years and, and we didn't have a lot of people coming in and then we've been up to I think around 100 or a little over 100 I think about three times uh, during the, uh, the existence of this church in Port Alberni. And uh, I know that's not big by terms of what we see sometimes down these mega churches but you know what it felt good and it felt like this is that what God desires and what God wants and and so I still feel that in my soul and in my heart I believe God wants to see souls saved I don't think that has changed not one little bit from the time I was called to go into the ministry until the day that we are at right now I think God still wants to see souls saved Amen. I think God wants to, to see that, uh, that each one of us in our walk with God would desire also the same thing and that would be to see people come and repent of their sins and be baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We got a phone call this last week and, uh, from my granddaughter down in Homa and, and uh, she was saying uh, to Granny and Papa, she says, I got the Holy Ghost this week. And uh, yeah, Gracie. And so I'm just, I'm just thrilled that, that, that this is being passed on to the next generation and the generation after. And, and if the Lord tarries, my great-grandchildren one day be at an altar with their hands up. And God will fill them with the Holy Ghost. And I think that's an awesome legacy that I would be able to leave behind. Everybody said amen. Amen. But not all of my children and not all of my grandchildren are living for God. So inside of my heart, there is a desire that each one of them would come to that place where they say, God, I want you to be Lord of my life. I want you to rule and reign within my life. That would be one of my deepest desires. And I think it would be for all of us that we see those that we love the most come to God and give their lives to God. Amen. I sometimes look at our lives and, and I think that we, we sometimes sell ourselves short of all that God wants to do. So I want you to raise your expectations today. I want, to raise, I want you to raise your desire for the things that God would do and the things that God has promised. For the Bible says that all the promises of God are... They are yea and amen. And there is no shadow of turning in God. That means when He promises something and He says something, you can mark it down, you can engrave it on stone, you can put it over the doorposts of your house because you know that if God promises you something, that He will fulfill those promises in your life. But I worry a little bit. And not a lot, just a little bit sometimes. And I mentioned to all of you that, that everyone with this whole retiring from doing secular work that every once in a while I have this, this moment of, of, you know, <gasps> what have I done type of thing, right? And, uh, and some of you have been living on fixed income for a while, so I don't know what it was like for you to transition, but, but I've been a worker all my life. I've never, never had a time where, where I didn't feel like I was you know, supposed to be out there and earning enough money to take care of my family and take care of my household and, and bless the church as well. I don't know if I've told you this, but um, when I first came to God, I, many of you noticed I can't sing. You may have not have noticed, but many of you have noticed that. Um, it used to scare me to death if my pastor would even ask me to give a testimony, much less get behind the pulpit and preach. And and uh, I kept asking God when I first came to God because I wanted to give God everything. And I would ask God, God, what can I do? You know, what can I give? Everybody else, my wife can sing, you know, she picks up a guitar, she plays a guitar, you know, you look at Stephanie, you know, she just sit, listens to a song, sits at the keyboard, and do 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 And it sounds like it's supposed to sound. You know, and, uh, and I can't do any of that. And I ask God, and God says, well, well you can give. Okay, I can give. And so I started tithing, and uh, God increased my salary to cover the tithe. Really? 
And then we bought a church, and, and I was, you know, paying the church mortgage. I would, I would contribute to that. I can't remember what it was. I think it was around two or 300 a month on top of, you know, my house payments and all the rest of it. And, and so I, I pledged that to God. And God had my, my future brother-in-law move into our basement and pay us that exact amount uh, that I had pledged towards the mortgage. And, and, and then I was his boss and he worked for me, so I got to send him out of town and we never had to feed him. <laughs> and, 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 but he still had to pay for that room, you know. And, and uh, you know, it's just, you go through all of this and, you, and you're thinking to yourself, how could you ever doubt God along the way? But you know why we get in different situations and we still think a little differently. So I worry a little bit about our hearts. Yeah. I do. I, I know that the Bible says in this passage of Scripture that God will give us the desires of our heart. Jeremiah seventeen nine says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So now let me give you this scenario. If God wants to give us the desires of our heart, I think it's imperative that we make sure we got the right things in there, don't you? I think it's imperative that we, that we learn how to place the right desires uh, within our hearts and, and see uh, that God will bless us if we do. Mark 7 and 20, regarding our heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, who can know it? Mark chapter 7, verse 20, it says, Out of the heart come evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All of these things come out of our hearts. That's what the Bible said. That's what Jesus said. So all of these things are, are resident there, not because we're bad people, because as far as I know, you're all, you're all good people, right? Now would be a good time to say amen. You know, uh, you're all good people. It's not because you're bad people, but it's because of iniquity. It's because of Adam. Let's all blame it on Adam. It's much easier than taking the blame ourselves, right? But it came from Adam when he sinned, that sin entered into the human race. has been a part of our makeup ever since. And so these things all dwell there. And so I've got to, I, I need to be careful what's in my heart. God wants to give me the desires of my heart, but he also wants those desires to be the right desires. He wants us to be able to desire probably more of him, I'm thinking, since that's what the Bible's all about. He wants us to have a desire to have a greater relationship with him. He wants us to desire to win souls because that's what he came to earth to do and then left us here to carry on that mission. So I'm thinking that that would want to be in all of our hearts that if it's not there, perhaps we should re-examine what's in there. There may be a bit of iniquity there that's stopping us from feeling God's heart. Right. Now it's quiet. And we need to get rid of that. Because if God's heart isn't influencing what our heart's desires are, it's because there's some sort of iniquity that's blocking him from being able to do so. And so we've got to make sure that we put the right things in there. Um, our hearts can deceive us into even desiring things that appear right, but the motive may be wrong. Yeah. Or the way that we do it may be wrong. And sometimes we do things for motives out of pride or, or for self-position or whatever the case may be. And even though it may be God's desire for us to do these things, but if the motive is wrong, then I'm not sure that God's blessing will be upon what we do, the doing right. Bible says that if we pray, or pardon me, uh, James 4 and 3, we receive not because you ask amiss that ye may consume it upon your own lust. So sometimes when we pray and we're asking, we're desiring things of God, it's not because necessarily we're asking the wrong things, but it's because we desire it for ourselves right. as opposed for the glory of God. Am I making sense to anybody here today? It made sense when I was thinking about it. So... If it doesn't make sense to you, then you can say, this one's just for Brother Nickel because it doesn't make any sense to me at all. But, uh, but I, so I can have the right desire. So say I want to have a big church. Say I want a church of two or 3,000 and that's, that's what I desire. But if it's for that everybody can look at Ron Nickel and say what a great job he's doing, 
Isn't the motive wrong? And is God really going to bless that prayer if the motive is that others will see that I'm a great person or I'm a wonderful person because of this? And I, I want to present to you today that it's as important that we have the right desires in our heart as that we have the right motives as well about why we're wanting to do the right things. Everybody said amen. Amen. And so, uh, and so we've got to be very careful. Our hearts can, can turn our attention. Now, how many of you, your attention is on what I'm preaching today? Okay, everybody's doing good? Just nod your head if you're, you know, let me know you're alive out there. Okay, there we go. Alrighty. So, uh, your heart's on it. But have you ever been in services or in a prayer meeting? Yeah. And had your, had your heart and your mind begin to worry about your relationship with your husband? Or your wife? Or your children? Or your grandchildren? Or begin to worry about, oh, you know, how am I going to make that payment? Or, you know, because your heart can, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you've you got good intentions. You're in a prayer meeting and you, and you want to pray the things that God wants you to pray and you want the desires of your heart to be right. And all of a sudden, you're just, you're just a million miles away. You may as well be in outer space because you're not anywhere close to where God is. Because you know? your heart is yet it's so easy. You know what? We've got to make sure that when we're in service like this or when we're in a prayer meeting that we, we don't allow our heart because it's going to desire, it's going to try and pull us off in a direction that we shouldn't go. That we take and stay focused on the things that God would desire for us. Amen. Hallelujah. So, a um, couple of things that we need to, need to look at here as far as uh, making sure that our heart is right when we come to God and that God would give us those desires. Second Chronicles chapter 19, verse 3. I preach from this a different message, but Jehu the seer said to Jehoshaphat in this passage, he says, there are good things that are found in thee. Thou hast prepared thine heart to seek God. And, and we want to be able to do that. We want to be able to pre- prepare our hearts to ask the right things with the right motive that God would give us the desires of our heart. Uh, Psalms 139, 23 and 24. David said it this way. This is the way that he wanted to make sure that, that when he came before God that his heart was right. He said, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my ways and see if there be any wicked thing in me. Whoa! I don't know whether I want to pray that prayer. Because you know what? I think sometimes we kind of like who we are. Yeah, and it's comfortable being who we are. God, search my heart. Look inside of me. Not only what's in my heart, but what I think about. Because inevitably, what is in my heart is what I'm going to dwell on. And and before long, if I dwell on it long enough, it's going to produce an action. And the action is going to produce sin. Sin, if if it has its final outcome, is going to produce death in me. So God, search my heart. Take a look inside of me. Look at the things that I do and the ways and the, and the way that I act and react and, and, and speak to people and react to circumstances. God, I don't want to be me if me is interfering with what you want me to be. I want me to get out of the way. And if there's any iniquity or wickedness that dwells in me, God, reveal it to me that we can get it out of the way and my heart can be pure. Boy, that's a hard prayer to pray. God revealed to me the things that are wrong because it's so much easier for us to justify who we are in the kingdom of God than it is to say, God, change me. Show me this so I can change. I want our desires to be what God wants our desires to be today. I think this prayer of David's needs to be on our lips. I think it needs to be something that we pray. God, show me. If there's anything in me that needs to be changed, God, I want you to show me. And then God puts us through a circumstance that reveals it and we fight against it. 
<laughs> pray the prayer, but then when, when you have that circumstance come up in your life and you lose your temper or you say the wrong thing or you do the wrong thing or, or the lust rises up or you want to lie or you want to cheat or the pride is there, whatever it may be, realize this is God answering your prayer. It's not the devil tempting you to do that. It's God revealing that to you so that you can get rid of it out of your life. Everybody said amen. amen. This is just amen. good stuff. Not because I said it. It's not good stuff. It's good stuff because it's the Word of God. Amen. amen. Um, second thing that we can do is, is, is get into this Word. We should never, never desire not to hear preaching and teaching. Because it is the foolishness of preaching that God has chosen to save them that believe. Yeah. Hard to understand why God set it up that way. To use us fallible. What, did he, what does the Bible say? He's choosing the foolishness of things of this world to confound the wise. Yeah, most of the time when I look at, you know, and thinking there's a little bit of pride in being a pastor, I just look at the qualifications yeah. <laughs> that God had for calling me. And I'm thinking, yeah, probably the people out there are, are much better than I am because, you know, they, you know, if God hasn't called you to preach, I mean, He chose the, the baser things, the foolish things, the, the less noble things, and, and those are the ones He called to preach. Go figure. Yeah, it wouldn't be the way I would do things, you know, but that's what God chose. So uh, what can I do? Get into the Word. Now we're talking about the heart, right? Now look at what Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 says. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is a... Of What? of the thoughts and intents of your heart. That's what we're talking about, right? Having the right things in our heart, having the right desires so God can fulfill those. Get into the Word. If it's being preached, get it. Amen it. Get involved in it. Don't just sit back and listen to a message, but get involved in it. Let it be, get into your heart and your mind and, and become a part of you. When you read it, don't just read it for the sake of, oh, I have to read my Bible today because pastor said I should read my Bible every day. Get into it. Look at it. Pray about it. Meditate on it. Let it do a work inside of you. Everybody said amen. amen. Because it's going gonna, it's gonna to get into the thoughts and the intents of your heart and all of a sudden maybe you feel convicted about something and you're going to have to go to prayer and say, God, I've got I've to change this. This is wrong. And then you may be reading and think, God just told me I was doing great. Hallelujah. Get up and do a little dance and say, thank you, Jesus. And, and there's going to be times of both, I hope. I hope it's not just all, you're doing, doing so good, Nickel. <laughs> I hope every once in a while God just, you know, comes during those times and I read the Word and He's patting me on the back and say, you're doing good. You're my son. Yeah, together we're going to go through it. Come on, it's true. We want that, don't we? Some people want that all the time. Don't want the other side. So, um, anyway, so um, we want to make sure we're into the Word. Matthew chapter 6, the uh, uh, third thing of getting our heart right is uh, where your treasure is, what you value, that is where your heart is going to be also. What do you treasure today? Well, I treasure a lot of things, I think. Um, I treasure my wife. I'll spend money on her. I enjoy spending money on her. It's not, I don't feel like I have to. I enjoy doing it, right? And, uh, and so I treasure her. And so I spend money. I will spend time with her because I have to. And she says I have to. No, she's watching this downstairs. Uh, because I want to. I like being with her. When I told uh, the company, Nickel Brothers, that I was going to be semi-retired and, and, and they want me to stay on, they would rather have me over there, you know, managing the business over there still. And I said, you know, my wife and I have reached that place where, uh, you know, we want to spend more time together. We want to. 
And, and it doesn't surprise me that I want to spend time with her. It surprises me that she wants to spend time with me. But, uh, but we enjoy that. And, uh, and so the things that you treasure will be the things that you invest in. You're going to invest time, money, effort, emotion into the things that you treasure and that you hold valuable. What is it that's in your heart that you treasure? Is it God and God's kingdom? Then, you know, I know that people, you know, get all upset whenever you preach about tithing or giving and stuff. Why? I don't know why you should. Because the Bible says, I think Atticus has got it made. Really, honestly. Because God loves a cheerful giver. God loves him. <laughs> Mainly because it's not his money, I guess. But whatever. <laughs> but he lo- he's got it on two counts. It says, except you become like little children. You cannot enter into the kingdom. Of-. Here he is, a little kid. And he loves to give. So God loves him on both counts, right? So he's got it made. The rest of us got to fight for that sometimes. And that's amazing how money gets... Oh, never mind. <laughs> gets a hold of us. Until it becomes so all important, right? So, what do you treasure? Well, that's what's in your heart. What are you spending money on? What are you investing in? That's what's in your heart. What do you give your time to? That's what's in your heart. What do you give your effort and strength to? That's what's in your heart. Kingdom of God? Is it way up there? Is your relationship with God way up there? That's what you're going to invest in. And so you know the things that are in your heart by the things that you invest yourself in in all of those different ways. So, promises of God. Let's, let's go into those promises of God that God gives us. Um, so, in this passage of Scripture, uh, there are, I wrote down four things. Maybe you can find some others that are prerequisites to God giving us the desires of our heart. Number one is, first of all, commit your way to God. Now, you can say that you do that, and I would like to say that I do that on a regular basis, that, that I commit my way to God. But I think that there's a whole lot of times that I get out of bed and go to work. Without ever giving consent, because that's... What I do, right? Without giving consideration to the fact that at the beginning of each day, I should be saying, God, I want to commit this day to what you desire and what you want me to do this day. God, help me to hear your voice. Help me to understand the leading of the Holy Ghost as it directs me this day because God, I want to follow you every step of the way. I don't want to just go to work and do my job. I want to follow you every step of the way on this day. I think too often I just go through my day without ever having said that. And can I tell you right now, I want to change that in my life. I want this to be my prayer at the beginning of the day is that God, please today. It's too often. I'm too dull. I'm too sometimes distracted. God, keep my attention. Keep my heart. Keep me focused on you. I want to follow the leading of the Holy Ghost this day. Commit it unto Him. It's not something that you're going to have. All of a sudden, you're inspired to do it. God's going to come down, touch you at the beginning of the day. The Holy Ghost is going to fall, and nothing is ever going to be a problem on that day as far as you following God. Somewhere at the beginning of your day, you've got to say, God, I'm your child, and I will do as you want me to on this day. And everybody said amen. Amen. So, so committing your way unto God is, is the first step. Um, number two, <laughs> trust in Him. Once you've committed it, and that, who was telling me earlier that they had just had a bad, oh, it was Kelly. I oh, hope you don't mind me mentioning your name, Kelly. It's, stand up, Kelly. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, Saying so she just went to work and just had a bad day from beginning to end. You know, it was just, you know, and the next day was 
totally different. So, so we've committed our way unto the Lord. God, I'm going to be in your footsteps. And now all of a sudden, something goes wrong. You have an accident with your pickup truck driving in Langley on a day when there's no traffic. And the one truck coming down the hill hits you. You say, how can that? That never happens. Happened to me. <laughs> I was distracted, whatever. I, I, you know, I thought I did my shoulder check, made, went to make a right-hand turn, and boom, smash right into my pickup. How does that happen? You know? Remembrance Day. I don't think there was another vehicle on the road. It's just me and him. <laughs> Until later, of course. <laughs> And it happens. And, you're, and we say, okay, so now we've committed our way unto the Lord. And we say, God, lead me. God. And then what happens during that day, we think to ourselves, well, you know, somewhere I must have stepped out of the will of God because this, this is just not good. Well, perhaps, just perhaps, that situation that God caused to happen is the exact thing that's going to cause somebody else to see Jesus Christ and how He's formed in you. Because we serve a God who, who wants us to grow and wants us to draw closer to Him. And uh, let's stand together, shall we? Amen. I got two more, so we'll do the next two standing, if that's okay with you. So, trust Him. Trust that He knows what He's doing. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows what's good for you better than you know what's good for yourself. He knows what's good for you. And of course, in trusting Him, don't forget to do good. (laughs) Amen. We read that, didn't we? We already said we're going to do good, right? Number three. Wait for it. It's coming. Don't get impatient with the things that you're waiting for. The Bible says He's going to give us the desires of our heart. He did not say He was going to do it immediately. Wait for it. Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. Sarah, you're going to get pregnant. I'm 90 years... What on earth? Wait for it. Don't get impatient. Don't bring in Hagar in to lay with Abraham. Don't get impatient with the will of God or how God does things in your life. Wait on Him. The microwave generation doesn't like to wait. Wait on God. Sometimes God is just there. He's ready. And he's wondering whether we're going to have the time to wait for the promise to come. So wait on God. Be patient. God will fulfill what He said He would. And the last one. Delight yourself in the Lord and He will give you the desires of your heart. Delight yourself in God. Up in the morning, God, it's so good to be your child today. So glad I have you as my heavenly Father. Delight yourself in the little things that come your way. You know, I think sometimes that that we don't see the big things because we get so used to God taking care of all the little things we forgot to thank Him for them. Be thankful for every little detail of things that God does in your life. Be thankful for the person who comes up and gives you a hug and says, man, it's good to see you today. Thank God for being able to get out of the bed and do the things that you want to do. I'm amazed at how God takes care of us. Amen. Thank God for your children and your spouse and your grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Thank God for the church that He's placed you in. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the city that He's placed you in. 
and uh, that He's given us an opportunity in this city to be able to make a difference in people's lives. So, those four things. What do we do? First of all, commit your way unto the Lord. Secondly, trust Him that He knows what He's doing and that it's all going to work out for good to them that love God and are called according to His purpose. That's you and me. It's all going to work out. Third thing, don't get impatient with what God's doing in your life. And the last thing, delight yourself in God. And delight yourself in your relationship with Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer. We can, we can miss the music today. Let's just let's take some time right now and let's just uh, worship God and let's just thank Him for what